Very good. All right. So welcome to the second uh, video with regards to the topic of radioactivity. And what I want to discuss, I'm going to just, I'm just going to open this video with uh, an alpha decay example or a clarification because I realized that the last example I gave in the last video was uh, was just arbitrary. So now I'm going to give you an actual uh, an actual example when this happens. We're also going to discuss beta negative and beta positive. Uh, types of decay and the, the actual last type of decay we will have left is the K capture which we will discuss in the next video not at length because this is actually a pretty exotic type of uh, decay that I haven't really seen uh, asked about but it could be so um, let's get started first of all I'd like to give an example of uh, what alpha decay may uh, look like. This is a Y. I have no idea what it looks like this may look like. First of all, it's really important that we know that A means the mass, the mass number of the uh, element, or rather the isotope. Z is the atomic, atomic number. And whenever, uh, and whenever you see A minus Z, this actually means the number of neutrons, which you can deduct and uh, get. We already mentioned that when an alpha particle is emitted, basically it's a helium nucleus, or a helium with a, a nucleus or a particle with two protons and two neutrons. And if I do the A minus Z, I get the number of neutrons, which is two, four minus two. Perfect. So when does that occur? Well, I just I took an example from a Caltech institution of Seaborgium. Yes, there is such element, and it's denoted by, I believe, Sg, if I remember correctly. And it's, uh, and it's an, uh, an isotope with 106 protons, and we're going to discuss the 263 isotope of Seaborgium. And you don't really need to remember uh, this guy's name, because this is just an example. I haven't really seen uh, students ask to uh, give uh, an actual outright example to alpha decay. But it just so happens that Seaborgium undergoes alpha decay. Seaborgium 263 undergoes alpha decay and to, turns into Rutherfordium. Rutherfordium. Rutherfordium, which is denoted by RF. RF. And let's see what would happen to this element. We would lose two protons, which would mean we would have 104 for, the, for this. Uh, type of element. It is a different element. It's a different substance. And what would happen to our uh, mass number? We would lose. We would lose four. So this would be a two, two fifty nine uh, isotope of ruthenium. And al also, we would also have the alpha particle, which is essentially a helium nucleus. This is basically. This is an example for uh, alpha decay and uh, Seaborgium 263 is an alpha decaying isotope and really when we're talking about what we may be asked about in exams I wouldn't expect this type of question show us how uh, give us an example maybe they would give you Seaborgium and uh, tell you that uh, and ask what may happen to this and they're not going to really expect you to remember with Rutherfordium but um, this is what alpha decay looks like. This is what alpha decay looks like. Usually when you're asked to give examples, you're asked about beta negative or beta positive. So let's discuss beta positive and beta negative. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw, just going to draw a nucleus that I'm going to use later. One, two, three, maybe four, maybe five, maybe six, and all of these are different protons here. I'm going to draw some neutrons. Da, 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 da. Okay, perfect. And before I'm going to get to what's going on here and uh, what, what am I really what am I really looking at uh, when I look at this nucleus, first of all let's consider what is beta negative decay. And it just so happens that a nucleus can can uh, can have a situation in which it has too many neutrons and not enough protons. And at this point you would say, well, if I can take one neutron out and add one proton, it would be ideal. Let's just take this example, whereas I have six protons and eight neutrons, 14 altogether. 14 altogether. And what would happen if, well, I, I can just take one neutron and, and just move it over here, I would have seven and seven 
I would still have 14 overall, but I wouldn't have considerably more neutrons than protons. Well, this would, this, this would be just dandy. This would be just great. And I'm not saying that eight is, is a lot and six is a few, but it just so happens that in this specific example, uh, uh, this isotope of six protons and eight uh, neutrons would want to undergo this process. So how can I take a neutron and essentially turn it into a proton? How would that even work? And it just so happens that it does occur. I can take a neutron and turn it into a proton. But notice what happens here. I'm taking, I'm taking an, uh, um, an, an, a subatomic particle that has no charge, and I'm turning it into a subatomic particle that has charge. And this violates the uh, law of conservation of charge. So that, that means I need to have a negative charge also occurring here just to add up the charges into a neutron. And we already know what a negative charge is. It can be an electron. It's a subatomic particle with a negative charge. And now we have both a positive and a negative charge. And if I add them up, I would get no charge. Perfect. So this adds up. And it just so happens that another particle uh, is associated with this type of act of event and it's called an antineutrino, an electron antineutrino, and I'm not really going to get into what this uh, is and why it is uh, why it is created, but all you really need to know about this little guy, the antineutrino, is that it has the same mass as the electron, the exact same mass, but it has no charge. So I'm just going to put it here, antineutrino uh, mass of electron, and no charge. That's all you really need to know about it. <coughs> Perfect. So this this process would actually take place, and let's see how it may affect how it may affect the elements. Well, uh, I'm having one neutron turned into one proton. So if, essentially, I'm not losing the total number of neutrons and protons. So my mass my mass number a would stay the same. Stay the same. It's not that I'm taking one proton and I'm taking it out of the nucleus, just like in, uh, in, uh, in alpha decay. I'm just having this, the same amount. They're all staying in the nucleus. What would happen to my atomic number? Well, if I look at this little column here, I notice that I essentially had six protons, and now I have seven protons. So my z changed. I gained one proton. That means I am gained one proton, gained, gained one proton. This would mean that the element is going to be different. I'm going to be dealing with a different material. And the only real thing that we have left to discuss is that we know that we have per neutrons and protons in a nucleus. We know that we have neutrons and protons, but electrons and antineutrinos do not really exist uh, as in, in a nucleus. That means that we can't have them in a nucleus, which would mean that in this type of decay, they'd be shooting out of the nucleus. They're not going to be staying in the nucleus. So let's take this, this example. And it just so happens that this is carbon-14. This is carbon-14. What would happen to carbon-14? Let's see. Well, first of all, we said that one neutron is going to turn to one proton. So our mass number is going to stay the same because we're not losing any neutrons and protons altogether. So we're going to have the same the same mass number, but we're going to gain, we're going to gain one proton to our z. So our z is going to, to turn into seven, which means that we're going to deal with another element, which is nitrogen. Now we're dealing with, with nitrogen. Also, we're going to have an electron and an electron antineutrino shooting out of the nucleus. They're not going to be staying in the nucleus. We're going to have them shooting out. And if you're wondering what type of decay and why this is called negative beta decay, well, take a look at the particle that is, that is shooting out of the nucleus. It is an electron or a beta particle. What a beta negative particle, particle really is is just an electron. It's just a more exotic name because it refers to an electron that was ejected out of the nucleus through the uh, event of decay. So beta negative decay is essentially, and this is just a, an intuitive way to putting it, I have too many neutrons, maybe one of my neutrons turns into a proton, 
And then I have to eject a negative charge just to conserve the law of uh, conservation of charge. This little electron that is created is ejected out because it doesn't belong in the nucleus. And another particle called an antineutrino is also generated and is also shooting out. It has no charge, but it has the same mass as the electron. And this example is a really great, great question to ask in an exam. And it actually was asked in a few exams, not only in Debrecen. But what you really need to think about is how can they ask this? Well, they can say, they can give you a type, a few types of elements. They can give you just carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, boron, or uh, hydrogen, helium. And they can say, uh, they can give you their atomic numbers. And they can say, well, give us an example of a decay. Well, basically being that this is six and this is seven, and they gave you that information, or maybe they gave you the the uh, the um, the uh, um, chart of elements. Then basically you can say, okay, my my atomic number would stay the same. I'm just going to turn this element into this element, and maybe I can shuffle these around. And in order to really solve and give give an example to any type of decay, you need to understand what is the effect. What is the effect of that decay on the uh, nucleus? So basically the effect, the effect is for beta negative is that the mass stays the same, is unchanged, unchanged, that's important to understand. And in beta negative, uh, I'm going to have a plus one to my atomic number. Perfect. So essentially, just like an alpha, alpha decay, my element is going to change. You know, it's going to be a different element. Perfect. And all we're left to discuss really in this video is what beta positive decay is. And if I, if I switch the situation around, let's just say I'm going to, you know what, I, uh, I tend to like carbon because I'm essentially made mostly out of carbon. So I'm going to draw some protons here. One, two, three four, five, six, or three, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to draw some neutrons here. It's not entirely spherical, but you can imagine that it can be. So this is my carbon. And you can also, you can already see that my carbon is going to be the carbon 11 isotopes because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, eleven total for the mass number. So this is, this is essentially, if you're looking at it, we have too many protons and too little neutrons. This is, this is essentially what is going on here. So let's see, what if we can turn one proton into one neutron? What if we can do that? We have six protons and we have five, five neutrons. And if I took one and put it over here, I would have essentially five, I'm just going to put an arrow here, five protons and four, am I saying four? Six neutrons. This is basically what is, what is going to occur here. And my atomic number is going to stay the same. Six plus five is 11, and five plus six is also 11. And the reason why this happens is that usually it would be more stable if we have more neutrons than protons. Just to remind you, it's a 1 to 1.6 ratio. And it just so happens that this, this event actually happens in carbon-11. We're going to get to that in a second. So what happens? How does a proton uh, spontaneously turn into a neutron? And it is slightly more, slightly more complicated than what I am going to uh, discuss with you now because we have different quarks and the proton and a neutron is about 1% more heavier than a, than a proton. So I'm not really going to discuss the, uh, the, you could say, microphysics of it. I'm just going to explain to you what is happening in that decay. So I know that this proton can turn into a neutron in some sort of interest, interesting uh, physical event, but I have a charge here, and here I don't have a charge. So this charge, I have to lose it somehow. And it, it just so happens that I can lose it in the form of a positron, a form of a positron. And if you wonder what is a positron, a positron, and I'm going to write it here because it's kind of important, a positron is the anti the antimatter of an electron. In the sense that a positron has a positive charge, 
an electron has a negative charge, but other than that, they have the exact same mass, and they're pretty much, um, you can say that they're counter, uh, counter parallel to one another in, in a sense. They, they are, well, they are the, essentially the same particle in the sense uh, of, of mass, but in the sense of charge, they are exactly opposite, and thus they are antimatter to one another. And this is going to be important when we're talking about what happens later. Perfect. So I am emitting my charge here, and also being that we spoke about the little uh, antineutrino that was created in beta negative, here in beta positive, we have a, uh, a positron neutrino that is generated here. And what we need to know about this neutrino, inverse to the antineutrino, a neutrino also has no charge, and it has the same mass of the positron here, and this is really all we need to know about this neutrino at this entry level um, understanding of this event. So let's, let's see again what happens. So I can have a proton with a positive charge spontaneously turn into a neutron with no charge, providing that I eject, I have this charge, and obviously positrons do not occur naturally in the nucleus, so they're going to be ejected out. And also we have a, a neutrino created here. So let's see how this would occur. I have my carbon 11. And I said that my mass number is going to stay the same. My mass number is going to stay the same, only I'm going to lose one proton. So I'm going to have an atomic number of five. And this element is called, we know this, it's called boron. And also what's created here, I'm just going to move slightly to the side. Also what's created here is a positron, a positron and a neutrino. Perfect. And these guys, being that they do not belong in a nucleus, they're going to be they're going to be tossed out of it. They're going to be tossed out of it. And we already know that this positron will also be referred to as the beta positive particle. Beta positive particle. And this is pretty much how positive beta decay would occur. And in the next video, when we're going to discuss what really happens, what really happens to this little guy as it comes out, and this is called annihilation. It's also in the minimals. This is an interesting phenomenon which is super important to understand because it's later used for imaging and we're going to learn about it um, at length. So the next video is really going to be uh, open with what happens to this guy, what is really this guy, and what does antimatter mean, what is the implications. So this is basically just going through what is positive and, and negative beta decay. How do they affect our the transition between the mother nucleus to the daughter nucleus, how they affect my atomic number, how they affect my mass number, and also we discussed how alpha particles affect those elements as well. And the most important thing I would say about understanding radioactive decay is understanding, understanding the differences that take place with the atomic numbers and the mass numbers. Hopefully you found this helpful. See you in the next video.